is the father and pioneer of modern day Israel public relations defense. He is the emeritus Felix Frankfurter Professor of Law at Harvard University. Which used to mean a lot more than it does now. When he was there, Harvard was a real academic institution. I just wrote a blurb for a new biography about our great hero, Alan, and I said that every person who walks in his footsteps like myself and Mort Klein and everyone else who is a fighter for Israel and each and every one of you who fights for Israel every day, to paraphrase Churchill, we're going to fight him on Twitter, we're going to fight him on TikTok, we're going to fight him on Instagram, we're going to fight him on Facebook. We all walk in Alan's footsteps. Come here! Yeah. My friends, the one and only Lion of Israel, Professor Alan Dershowitz. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you so much for being here today. Yom Ha'atzma'ut Sameach. May we have a great, great Independence Day. And of course, the meaning of independence is that Israel has the right to defend itself independently without regard to what any other country or person believes. My dear friend, Benjamin Netanyahu put it very well when he said, if we must, we will go to it alone. But we're here to tell him and the people of Israel that you will never have to go to it alone. You will always have us. We will always have your back. You can always count on us. We will do everything in our power to make sure that the world and our country, the United States, supports you. And if one administration won't support you, we'll get another administration. If one politician won't support you, we'll get other politicians to support you. If one person won't support you, we will get another party to support you. But we will never rest until the vast majority of Americans' views are accepted because the vast majority of Americans support Israel. The President and the Secretary of State say that by denying Israel ammunition, it will reduce deaths. Can you imagine anything as ridiculous as that? No, it will increase both Israeli and Gazan deaths. The only deaths it will reduce is the deaths of Gazan terrorists and of Hamas terrorists. And the one thing we don't want to do is reduce the death of Hamas terrorists. The more Hamas terrorists are defeated, the more peace will come to the world and the better off the Palestinian people and the people of Gaza will be. So this is a win-win. If Israel destroys Hamas, everybody benefits but Iran. Everybody benefits but Hamas. Everybody benefits but Hezbollah and the Houthis. And peace benefits most of all. They say that defeating Hamas will increase the strength of Hamas. How could anything be as ridiculous as that? You know, they say that you cannot defeat an ideology. Does anybody remember World War II? And what has happened to Nazis after we defeated Germany? Let me tell you what happened to Nazis. They moved to Columbia University. That's what happened to Nazis. They moved to Harvard University. They moved to Duke University, where a few dozen Hitler youth walked out on Jerry Seinfeld yesterday because he's a Jew. That's it. Jerry Seinfeld, who I know, you know, is not somebody who's devoted his life to defending Israel. He's a Zionist. Yes, he believes in Israel's right to exist. But is that a reason for walking out on him? Look, they have a constitutional right to walk out on him 
and we have a constitutional right to call them bigots, which is exactly what they are. They are exactly the same as people who would walk out because somebody was speaking was black or a woman or gay or somebody else. Yeah, you can walk out on them, but we can call you what we deserve they, and what you deserve to be called. To everything there's a season, as Ecclesiastes says, la col zaman. This is the season to defeat Hamas. Yeah! This is not the season for a ceasefire. A ceasefire is a surrender. This is the season for total victory. When yes. Churchill and Roosevelt called for total unconditional victory, the world applauded. But when Israel calls for total victory, the administration cuts off its access to weapons, including smart bombs. Now, what's the purpose of a smart bomb? The purpose of a smart bomb is to enhance Israel's ability to not kill civilians, but to focus solely on terrorists. If you deny Israel the right to have smart bombs and require it to use only dumb bombs, it will increase the number of civilians killed. And remember too, that Hamas uses civilians as a shield. Sinwa said the other day, and the New York Times quoted him, that the goal of Hamas is to see Israel kill as many Hamas, as many Gazan civilians as possible. Because every time, every time Israel kills a civilian, it hurts them in international opinion. But every time Hamas brings about the death of a Gazan civilian, which it does every time it uses human shields, they win, which is why Sinwa surrounds himself, not only with Israeli hostages, but American hostages. And I want to talk about that for one second. The idea that the United States would condition intelligence about where the hostages are on Israel not going into Rafah so violates the rights of American citizens. We're talking about American hostages. And if the American administration is denying Israel the ability to rescue American hostages, what could be worse than that? What could be worse than that? one minute before I finish about an institution that I have spent almost 70 years at. My life has been in academia. From 1955 to 2024, I have been in academia. I think I know as much about academia as any person living in America today. I have lived academia. I have taught 10,000 students. And I am so appalled at what is going on at American universities today. What I see at American universities today is what we saw at German universities in the 1930s. Yes, Students yes, yes. refusing, refusing to learn the facts about Israel. Students being propagandized by diversity, equity, and inclusion which is the breeding ground of anti-Semitism, intersectionality, the critical legal racial studies, um, BDS. These things all originated at American universities in the same way that Nazism originated at the University of Munich, at the University of Berlin, at the University of Heidelberg. And who do you think welcomed the Nazis from these universities in the 1930s to America, Harvard University. Who do you think hired? Who do you think hired Kathy Boudin, who turned from being from being a protester to being a terrorist who killed four American police officers in the interests of her revolution? She then served time in prison and get what university hired her to teach students after she got out of prison. Columbia University. Can you imagine Columbia University hiring somebody who had 
that serve time for killing people from the Ku Klux Klan. So the one thing that universities lack is courage. Courage. An unwillingness to speak truth to power. An unwillingness to stand up to the haters. An unwillingness to tell the truth to its students. An unwillingness to seek justice. And the one thing I want to end with is go back to the Psalms of David and remember what God said to the Jewish people. Hashem oz li o yitain. God will give the Jewish people oz, strength. Hashem yivarech et amo bashalom. Only then will the Jewish people get peace. Peace through strength. Use your strength. Use your power. Never submit. Never back down. Always fight back. Always fight for justice. And we will prevail. Thank you.